Hi, this is Marla from Southwest Grain and Lemon. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to the information on kosher that I've pulled together for you. As you'll see, I titled this Kosher Support Group for obvious reasons. I think we struggled more with kosher this last season than we have in a number of years. And I wanted to spend a little time discussing what we thought some of our issues were, as well as what we can possibly do going forward to avoid as many issues as we possibly can. So with that, let's get into it. First off, let's spend a little time going over what I thought were some interesting things about kosher that you may not know, or at least I didn't know until I sat down and was doing some research. So for the seeds, they can emerge in soils from 40 degrees all the way up to 100 degrees. So this is really a wide temperature range and it makes kochia very competitive with any crop that we're growing. A majority of the plants that we have are considered C3 plants. So that essentially means that they germinate in cooler weather and their growth slows down considerably when the weather heats up and the soil dries out. C4 plants, on the other hand, will also grow when it's cooler out, but growth will ramp up considerably when the temperature increases. Corn is a good example of a C4 plant. Other than that, we really don't have a lot of them. So it being a C4 plant gives it an advantage when the weather gets hot and dry. It continues to grow while those other C4 plants or crops stop growing or slow down growing. I did miss that kosher will push from beyond three inches deep in the soil. So it's, it's coming from everywhere. Kosher is also a very opportunistic plant and has adapted to our management practices. Instead of just having one flush of kosher in the spring, we are now seeing that kosher will flush later in the season as well, which will avoid our spring burn down chemical application, which isn't a good thing. It's gotten smart over the years, I guess you could say. One bright spot in all of this though, is the fact that kosher seed is only viable for up to two years. So that's a good thing. So to better manage kochia, we need to understand why it's surviving. The, the teeny graphic over on the right side of this page is a chart of all the chemical groups that we use in ag chem. You don't necessarily have to read every word on it. I just wanted it more for a visual. So the red boxes are circling the chemistries that we already know that kochia is resistant to. So groups two, four, five, and nine. And I put some examples of each of those chemicals on the slide here. Um, this feels like it encompasses a frightening majority of this sheet overall. You'll also notice that there is one orange box so this is the latest chemistry that NDSU is currently doing some studies on to determine the extent of resistance. This is group 14, which includes chemicals such as AIM, Spartan, Valor, all of which we depend pretty heavily on to help us control kochia especially in crops like sunflowers. Now thinking back on last season in the kochia issues that we were seeing, 
I think we can attribute it, attribute it to several reasons. I think we possibly had too much rain on our Spartan and it pushed that active ingredient deeper into the soil, leaving a layer of unprotected soil where we were having kochia germinate and grow. I also think that our kochia is getting too big before we do some of our burn down in some instances. Spartan is also much more soluble at a soil pH of around seven. And if anyone has had soil tests done in the last few years, we're starting to see our topsoil pH dropping. So getting closer to six, some even lower than that, which causes Spartan to be less soluble, therefore less effective. And we are starting to see multiple flushes of kochia, as I had mentioned earlier. Okay, so now that we have determined some of the issues that we are seeing, we can consider what our options are going forward. You'll see the top line on this slide has several different options and combinations of approaches to applying chemical, most of which include using a pre-emerge application in addition to our normal applications of, of chemical that we are doing already. We also need to make sure that we're using multiple modes of action and not just in a single season, but in our chemical applications as a whole, in our program as a whole. We need to also be considering weed size when we're making these applications. If you look at the AIM label, it recommends that application be made on four inch or less kochia. I honestly feel like this is quite possibly too big. Once kochia, kochia gets to be four inches or taller than that, we, we seem to be having a hard time killing it with AIM, even when growing conditions are good. And the final thing I have listed is to make sure that we are using proper adjuvants at the right rates when we're using any of these chemistries. Now let's look at our a few of our most common crops and I'm just going to run through some different ideas and things that we have seen that works um, that has helped us to control kochia. Typically when we're planting corn, we're often planting it into wheat stubble, giving us a good opportunity in the fall to not only do a burn down, but also a fall applied pre-emerge chemical. One great option I think is using Valor. It's got some good kochia activity Remember, it is also a group 14 chemistry, so we need to keep that in mind. Um, but the nice thing about Valor is it leaves your rotation pretty wide open for the next season. So if you happen to not plant corn on those acres, you can plant almost anything with the, ex the exception of a few crops. Once we get into the cropping season, I think we need to make sure that we are bumping up our rates of dicamba that we're using in our pre-plant burn down. Um, I would say we should not ever be applying anything less than six ounces to help us get control of any of those emerged kochia, and it helps with many other weeds as well. Now, when it comes to an in-crop application, using a product like Lotus tank mixed with some atrazine has, is going to help your field stay cleaner for a longer period of time. And combining chemistries like this not only gives us some good broadleaf activity, but it'll also help with um, some grass activity as well. 
You can see that I listed some prices on these slides to give you an idea of a cost per acre of all of these things. And of course, using Diflex and Status are still a really good option in crop on corn. So these are just some ideas that I put together. There's lots of corn herbicides available. And when considering which ones to use, we just need to be mindful of crop rotations because a lot of the corn prees that are available have some rotation restrictions that we need to be a little careful with. Now on to the more challenging crop, sunflowers. First, and quite possibly the most important thing we need to consider when planting sunflowers is thinking about the overall kochia pressure that the field has. If you have the slightest worry about having too much kochia pressure from the previous year, you may want to consider planting a different crop on those acres. One thing worth mentioning again is making sure that our weed size is not exceeding four inches and quite possibly even less than that. When we are relying solely on a contact herbicide like AIM in our pre-plant burn down to take care of a tough weed like kochia, it needs to be small. I also noticed this last season walking a few fields after we had done a burn down with AIM. The kochia looked like it was dead when you were just driving through the field, but when I stopped and got out and got down on my hands and knees, I noticed that the very top of the kochia plant still had a tinge of green. It took about a week or so for it to essentially recover and start growing again. And those, any of those plants were in that four inches and maybe a little bit taller. So I feel like we just need to make sure that we're getting this application done on a timely basis. So you will also see I listed Valor in the fall which is an option in front of sunflowers as well. Using Zidua has worked very well for us the last few years. It, it by itself doesn't have a lot of activity on kochia, but I think in combination with other chemistries, I think we're seeing that it's helping our kochia pressure, adding Aim with our burn down, like I had mentioned already, is still going to be important. And of course, using Spartan or Spartan Charge or some other formulation of sulfentrazone is definitely still a practice that we want to continue. Um, but if you look at all of these chemistries that we use on sunflowers, all but the Zidua is a group 14 chemistry. So I think we just need to be mindful of this and be keeping an eye on our level of control with these products. I also listed Authority Supreme, which is a premix of Spartan and Zidua. And the cool thing about Zidua is it has some really nice activity on grasses, as well as having some broadleaf weed control. Okay, so last but not least, let's consider some options in wheat. Luckily, it feels like the wheat is sort of our easy button and we have lots of different options that we can use to control kochia in wheat. A few things to consider is to make sure that we're using our wheat year as an opportunity to mix up our mode of action. I also think that we should not be relying solely on fluoroxapure or Starane, which is in wide match, to be doing all the heavy lifting when it comes to killing kochia. This chemistry is still working very well and we need to make sure that it keeps working. 
A couple products that I listed here that I think are interesting and that we need to be thinking about when we're picking our wheat herbicide is using multiple modes of action. So Husky FX is, is a broadleaf only product and it has three different broadleaf modes of action. Um, Battalium Amped is another chemistry that has two broadleaf modes of action, but also contains a grass herbicide with it as well, which is why it's a little bit higher per acre. Our wheat year is the perfect opportunity to also get a fall burn down done ahead of any wheat escapes that we may have had in our wheat. And it, it gives us an opportunity to prepare for the following cropping season as well. So that kind of wraps up the crop specific information that I wanted to give you where I mostly just wanted to throw out some different options that you may not be thinking about or considering when you're thinking about weed management. Here I have listed a few other options when it comes to kochia control. The first one is Paraquat, which actually does a pretty good job of controlling kochia, but it is a restricted use product and one that I personally don't want our applicators to have to apply, nor do I want any of you to have to apply either. It's, um, it's, a, it, it's a product that you just have to handle very carefully, um, but it is an option nonetheless. I feel that we are not that far away from the second option that I have listed here, which is smart sprayers that are able to deliver a high rate of herbicide to a specific area of the field, or even drone sprayers for that matter. It, there's just some new technology that is probably closer to a reality than a dream at this point. So that's something that we need to be thinking about. Um, new active ingredients are something that we need to keep our eyes open for. We don't see them come to market very often, so it's not something that we can rely heavily on, but something to keep in mind. The last one that I have listed here, I think is the most feasible option and something that everybody can do on their farm. We need to manage the seed bank by not allowing weeds to set seed as best we can. I know that we're not going to be 100% with this, obviously, but we, we should be thinking of it as a start clean, stay clean approach, as well as looking at our weed management more as a whole program instead of each situation by itself and always be thinking ahead. So before I wrap things up here, there are a few miscellaneous things that I wanted to make our growers aware of. First is regarding the biological buzz. I know that these are products that are not currently regulated by the EPA. So we need to keep that in mind and make sure that we're doing some research before we jump in with both feet on these products. I think that they're very interesting and that they will have a fit and a benefit on some of our acres and some of our crops. But I, need, I, I think we need to walk before we run with these products. So I would recommend that you not use them on every acre and would not recommend cutting your nitrogen rates as I think some of them are saying that you can do. But I do think we should definitely be splitting some fields and trying them and doing some test strips and collecting some information to see if they're something that we are finding some benefit with. Really, any of these biologicals are going to run roughly $15 an acre. Second, 
I think we all need to be prepared for grasshoppers this next season. With the snow cover that we've had all winter long, it creates a very nice habitat for them to survive the winter. While there really isn't anything we can do until we start seeing the actual insects, I'm mentioning this more so we can be maybe mentally prepared to deal with some grasshopper pressure this next season. Third, glyphosate prices have slipped a little bit since this last fall. So that's promising news. If you are a forage producer, let's be aware that millet is going to be in tight supply. And this, this is more so German, Siberian, a hay type of millet. We do have some supply on hand, but I'm a little nervous that after that's gone, I don't guarantee that we're going to be able to find more. And if we can, I'm afraid of what it is going to cost. Um, sorghum supply seems to be fine. We've got lots of oats, so we do have some options if, if we happen to see German millet run out. Um, can also get proso millet, which would be an option as well. I started using a texting app so I can send information out to a large group of you guys at once. I'm going to try to use it more this next season if there is something that I feel like is important for you guys to know about. But I want to remind you that if I'm annoying you with these texts, you can just let me know and I can very easily remove your name from the list and it won't hurt my feelings too bad. Lastly, we are hopefully within 30 to 40 days of getting in the field. I want to encourage everybody to be safe this season. I want to express my gratitude for your support of Southwest Grain. And if I have sparked any questions with any of this information, I want you to go ahead and give myself or Mike a call and we can talk through any of this. Thank you for your time.